Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rain World. Good news and bad news. Bad news first, this is another video without any audio, so I'm recording in post. Apologies, but uh, it's better than nothing. On one hand, that's my that's my argument. Uh, the good news is that this is the last video. That'll have no audio <laughs> to go along with it, which is uh, horrible, but at least, at least I'll be getting back into it next episode so that's i'm happy about that and having said that now all of a sudden i'm at a loss for words i don't know what i just ate that's something for sure because i was getting a little hungry just before <laughs> uh, going through a silent gate with none of the ambience which is oh you know this is important welcome to the farmer rays cycle 33 farmer rays at the bottom uh, you will remember that five pebbles was telling us head west through the farm arrays and then down deep into the earth there you will find the old ways or something along those lines that's exactly what i'm going to do we have a mission in hand to go west and you will see me do that pretty much immediately because this is an area of the game which i'm not very happy this is an this is one of my least favorite areas which is it's a complicated a, a little bit more of a complicated issue than that. I used to quite enjoy this area. It was, I liked it by all means. It was nice. Yay, we have those worm guys. I'm not sure if Slug Cat can eat them normally or if that's only the hunter. You also have another Slug Cat, which is the, the monk who is very peaceful with all these other animals. So they're not as hostile towards him. Uh, I don't like this area. When I first played it and when I first explored it, it was fine by all means. But unfortunately, there's this just a single screen which is broken, it's buggy, and it's there's an invisible wall, and it's just that single hours upon hours upon hours. I'm not kidding. Something like 10 hours was spent on this one screen trying to bypass this invisible wall because of a because of an interplay of a lot of weird buggy or just glitchy behavior and then only to find out that there is in fact an invisible wall and this is not in fact my game just acting strange i've just grown to hate this place i i i detest it i hate it i'm just gonna leave right away you'll notice i did pick up an apple a, a grape apple they're liquid there's liquid there's liquid inside of them you can throw them they explode they're good for these deer guides this is part of the reason why i hate this area they're fine normally and here comes a vulture so hide away uh, these deer guys they uh nothing hunts them so he'll, he'll be safe don't worry about him they eat those apples so you can use them those apples to lure them down to you you saw him sit down before that's because he wanted to go get that apple and when they come down for you, you can then jump on top of their antlers and you can hold on to them. And so that you can use them as a mode of transportation. In fact, it's necessary. And here I am eating some bugs. Faint of heart, look away. You can also use those apples if you throw them. They, they explode. And I'm assuming the vapor... <clears throat> excuse me. Th throat in my... Cro croaky throat... Frog got frog in my voice? I don't know. Frog in my throat. <laughs> That's the saying. Uh, the vapor, I suppose, from the apples, they summon a an, a deer. So you'll throw one, it'll, it'll pop, and it's a very satisfying popping sound. Sadly, you're never going to hear it because I get through this area quite quickly. And, uh, and it, it summons a deer. And when the deer summon, with the deer summon, there's also like a deer call that goes along with it. Which, oh my god, you're also not going to hear it. There's a lot which you don't hear. Why does my... This was... This was meant to be my big return. This was meant to be my, hey, look at... Check me out. I'm... I'm back with a new microphone, some new audio... $300 worth of audio equipment. A, a no longer stuttering... Like better sound quality. Alas, you don't hear it. <laughs> you don't get to hear it. It frustrates me to no end. Oh yeah, and you see that grass that's moving to the left? Yeah, those are creatures. They'll kill you. By the way, everything kills you. Right now, what they're reaching for, they tend to reach for the nearest target. They're probably reaching for a deer. And I'm I'm not sure. I only took one apple. Typically, you should take two, even three, because you can swallow one down and not eat it. So normally, I take three just to be absolutely certain. 
for the purpose of one of them is to summon a deer. The second one is to feed the deer, and the third one is to is is a backup just in case. You know, just in case the deer decides to move a different direction, because you don't have any control of the direction that the deers walk in. You just have to make do with their will. So sometimes I I can reset it by jumping off their antler onto the ground. They come down to eat that food again, but then you you feed them again, and then you jump onto their antler, and hopefully they go the right way. Again, you can watch them. If you put it on the floor like I did just then, they kneel over, they eat it, they come back up, and now let's hope he goes the right way. Nope. He's going the wrong way. Okay, he's going to keep hurting right. Great. Exactly what you want. <laughs> this is, yeah, part of the reason that... I swear, there's this one screen very far in the bottom right that it's... It's close to a karma gate that links back to links back to the outskirts, the city, city outskirts. You know the area you start the game in. This place links back to that place, so you can very, you can readily sequence break. Remember what what his face was telling us? Five pebbles. He mentioned head through the farm arrays and then downwards. You can do that from the very beginning of the game. Five pebbles also added, however, that mark on your that mark I have given you, that is what will uh, let you through. So there's also an echo down in the bottom right. And this is interesting. For some reason, and you can see me looking at, a little bit confused, my map is already filled out. And I can point out, yeah, see, that's exactly where I'm going to the left. But I have no idea why my map is already filled out. It's, it's bizarre. Maybe... And you can see how little time I have as well in the bottom left. Maybe, I know when you play as the hunter, this is the area you start in. This is actually the area you start in, just further to the right. You don't have to ride the deer. The place, you start in the farm arrays, and the map is already of this part is also already completed. I just figured that was the game's way of indicating or giving you a direction to head. I just figured the game does that so you know you should head through to the to this other place uh, apparently not the case and you can see suddenly the atmosphere changes everything runs away everything hides from the rain suddenly it's a lot dimmer and darker i am trying to find a safe spot little did i notice that there was a safe spot earlier i forgot to get off i wasn't paying enough attention so i have to go here to get through the, through, the, through to the safe spot i really don't want to and this is the second time you guys get to hear rain. But alas, you don't, because my audio is missing. Just just pretend that's how it sounds like. You can see rain underground, and I'm I was questioning, like, what's that about? You can you should have heard me going nuts at this point. I'm thinking, like, why does it have to be a maze to get to the to the uh friggin' the shelter? In fact, I'm pretty sure there was yeah, it looked like there was a tunnel right there I could have crawled through. And this is... You think it looks bad? It sounds even worse. Uh, you know, if you think I make it, think again. Right now, this is flooded. <laughs> the lower levels end up getting flooded. So I suppose... This is underground. This is prob Oh, see, I get stuck trying to head through that T intersection because I can't see and the screen is shaking. And there I die. Shame. It's the first time I've ever run out of time here. This is the first time I ever had to go here to try and save. Because uh, normally I just skip over it. I try to reach the end as quickly as I can. So I suppose the, the area I was in before where I, I thought I was underground, but it was still raining. Well, I guess, no, that was actually a little bit above ground. You can see I'm confused a little bit. I'm I'm realizing I didn't save in the farmer raids at all. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, hold on. This is still the Sky Islands. Why am I in the Sky Islands? Oh, right, I didn't save. And, and that's one of the benefits of having uh, five extra levels of karma. All the karma gates in the game, they only require the first five original levels to get through. Any extra levels on top of that, so the ones with the circles and the crosses, those... Those aren't required for karma gates. They're effectively padding. Because you could imagine something really bad that could have happened. What's going on? Why did I pause? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Please come back. 
one of the things that could have happened, for example, if I didn't have those five extra levels of karma, I could have lost a karma and it would have reached the point where I wouldn't have enough levels to get through that karma gate. And now suddenly I'm on the wrong side of the wrong side of the door. I can hear my dog barking in the background. I'm actually going to have to cut in post. What the hell? Okay. Uh, just just a moment. I'll, I'll be gone without you even realizing. Okay, welcome back. Or rather, I'm coming back. Uh, how come... Oh no, you're going to hear this. I'm a little bit out of breath. How embarrassing. I only climbed up a single flight of stairs. <laughs> oh, and now my heart's pumping. I am really unfit. How does it always happen? I'm sure other content creators have their own stories. I have spent weeks and weeks in silence. Part of the reason I've been away is because I've been doing a whole heap of study. And now I'm returning because I'm a little bit... I have a little bit of extra time and this is something I want to do, simply put. Uh, so I've had weeks upon weeks where there are dozens of hours of pure uninterrupted silence. Only to the moment you start pressing the record button, uh, don't crush me. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to give him my apple because I don't actually need to give him my apple. It's a lot quicker just to walk yourself naturally across this area. The moment I start recording, everything goes to hell. It's like, maybe some guys have similar anecdotes. You ever go to the toilet to do a, to do a big one? I'm one of those kind of people who go to the toilet for a very long period, for very long periods of time. I'm talking up to potentially half an hour. It's relaxing. It's quiet. Really, that's the main draw. It's just quiet. Uh, but surely, do you people have stories where suddenly you, you have a moment to go, all right, I'm going to go use the bathroom. The moment you express that intention, suddenly, and the moment you sit down and start doing the deed, you, you, get, you get busy with like all these problems. Oh, this is embarrassing. What I'm doing in the background right now, I'm talking about don't you just love the sound design in this game? If you th these bugs, they shock you. They have such a very satisfying, uh, shocking sound. It sounds great. Uh, you will pro probably hear it in the future because there are uh, there are other enemies which use this shocking mechanic with the same sound, and I will probably run into them, you know, next episode. Next episode, no doubt, I'll probably die because they're one of the harder enemies to avoid. Oh, is this where I... Is this where... Because I only grabbed two fruits. No, no, it worked. See, they explode into a vapor. Right now, you can hear a call in the background like, whoa, 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 something like that. And that's the deer coming along. Those apples look a lot smaller than usual. Typically, they're really, really big. And here he comes. There's an interesting uh, reputation system in this game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, that, that, I didn't mean to do that. You're meant to feed it. He doesn't bow his head unless you feed him. <laughs> you can see me trying. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> uh, you can throw food into their mouth. That is possible. And that's the way I used to do it until somebody pointed out, no, just drop the food. They'll pick it up themselves. And I was like, oh, oh isn't, that, isn't that something? Get out of here with your logic. So there is a reputation system in this game. It's most obvious between the deers. If two deers cross path, one of them is generally more senior than another. So what, what will happen is the one with the lower rank will kneel and actually bow their head. Do we see it happen here? That would be such perfect timing to see it happen here. Well, which one are you going to need? Huh? None of you? What? Oh god, and a phone call. Wow. Excuse me just a moment, I'll be back. And we're back. Yes, I am back, thank god. Get another phone call. Oh yeah, so here, right underneath me right now, that's that was there's this alternative save point right there. Like literally right there. I don't know why I missed it. I do know why I missed it, because I'm I'm a loser. What? What was I just saying? All right, reputation system. So it's most obvious between deers, they tend to bow to each other. It actually exists between 
other animals as well. So even lizards have tiers and hierarchies between each other. Some are very territorial. For example, green lizards, they're very territorial. They'll actually even attack. They'll attack other lizards of their own kind, and they'll attack even vultures because they're big, dumb, and idiots. Uh, but they, there's also a reputation system between species. For example, uh, slug cat and other lizards. Did you know you can actually tame other lizards? Or not, not so much tame them. You, you become friends with them, and they be, they come, they become friendly uh, to you. They they start living alongside you with friend, on friendly terms. They even hibernate with you, which is really really cute. When you go to hibernate, and another lizard comes in and it starts chilling out. <laughs> I accidentally grabbed the <laughs> the uh, bug. You can see in the bottom the bug um, zaps. Yeah, the bug zaps the lizard even. So I guess you could use that as a potential uh, bait. You could throw it at a lizard and then <laughs> while it's getting shocked, you could stab it to death. Because that is that is how I kill lizards. What I tend to do is I throw a spear. It gets embedded in the lizard. And then I run up to it. I take out the spear and then I throw it again. So that's how, you, that's how, that's how I get a kill. I have also killed a vulture. Did you know you can you can you can kill vultures? And so vultures, for example, once you kill them, you can take the mask. And scavengers tend to really respect you if you have their masks. I'm sure you've noticed their outposts tend to be decorated with pearls. And wait, and also scavenger masks? I mean, bird masks, vulture masks. I'm not sure. But here's an interesting thing. Apparently, you can steal a vulture's mask without killing it. And if you, if you do that, uh-oh, what am I doing? Okay, I'm, oh, it didn't eat the, it didn't eat the apple. <laughs> so it's kind of stuck in the sitting pose. <laughs> These guys are the worst. They're so annoying. It's like, back off. <laughs> I try to drop a fruit. Oh, no. Okay, I guess I'm just going to do it this way. Or I give up. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Supposedly, possible to steal a vulture's mask. If you do that, you'll now have a a vulture, a maskless vulture. It apparently gets bullied by other vultures. I, I don't know how people can prove that or how people can show for it. Oh, I'm finding a spear and I'll use the spear to, to platform. Okay, that makes sense. So I, I don't know where this information comes from, how people can prove it, but I mean... If that's the case, I'm willing to believe it. This game has considerable amount of uh, amount of thought to it. Uh oh. Okay, so it ended up working out. Oh, it ate both. It ate both those apples, huh? Seriously, these guys are so buggy. Uh, you can. Well, first off, it is pretty cool how the antlers. They seem to exist in 3D space. You can notice that when they turn around, Slug Cat sort of automatically edge detects the, the nearest antler and ends up teleporting to it, but really smoothly. And yeah, you can see the outpost of the scavenger, top left corner, that's a deer skull. And there's a whole lot of spears. Deers, they, ha they can be killed, but you're not going to feasibly kill them by yourself. The only way I've seen them killed is through mods. And yeah, look at the look at the graffiti in the background right now. Does that look like say big five pebbles or big sister moon? Or is that actually graffiti of our precursors? So you can see it turn around and it you know <laughs> I I hate these bugs. I mean I hate these deer. I should also I'm almost almost out of time also. Thankfully though, there's a shelter right after this point. In case it's not obvious. We are approaching the final... I think we are in the final act of the game. When when Five Pebbles tells us head west and down into the earth, that's basically the start of the third act. The first act is... It starts at the start of the game. It ends with um, when you meet Big Sister Moon. The second act is the climb up to Five Pebbles. And then the final act is... It ends when you, when you beat the game. Oh, ho, ho. So we are middle of the third act at this point. And given that the next area, I'm actually not too good. The next area sucks. You just saw that Karma Gate. 
the area that follows that is just horrendous. And it gets, it just keeps getting worse. There's no, there's no other way. Of, it just gets worse as you play this game. I love it so much. You know, I did have a discussion about how I like how the graffiti, it, it adds a sense of depth to, there's a collectible above me, by the way. It's not so obvious because you can't hear it either. You can see it moving slightly. And I'm considering climbing up to it, but you need a spear to do it, so I decide against it. Sadly, you can't hear it, which was kind of important, but oh well. Uh, but, you know, graffiti is an interesting way of adding character and depth to a precursor, a precursor civilization. Because I find... In, in a lot of other games that tend to feature a precursor or a people before the people, they tend to be, well, when you initially they are judged by their, they're characterized by the ruins they left behind. So typically they're a highly technological race, usually, and they disappeared seemingly suddenly and for no reason, no obvious reason. And then they slowly do get fleshed out, but it's, it tends to be, the method of fleshing out tends to be a little bit, I would say, boring. You, know, you introduce this idea of, usually you have some kind of a historian who who expands on the idea of the precursors. Oh, hello. Right, this guy, another echo. A little beast, speaking of precursors. <laughs> but not as dim as the rest, perhaps? So down into the depths you go, as many others before you, drawn to the void again and again, an endless drip, drip, drip. Much like these tunnels and caves that amuse me so, the bones of forgotten civilizations heaped like so many sticks. Did they dig too deep or not deep enough? Fools, we were right to drill straight through them. So, <laughs> this is a very Minds of Moria moment. What What's at the bottom? <laughs> Why am I heading down to the earth, as many others have done before me? This is, you know, what what did Five Fellows mean? That there is an escape from the cycles at the bottom of the earth. That apparently people may have drilled too deep. What's going on? Scary. Scary, scary now. As I was saying about the precursors, however, uh, you know, the, the methods of expanding the horizons of the precursors is generally, you know, it's straightforward. It's nothing special, I don't think. It's been done plenty of times before. A historian seeks, seeks them out or artifacts are found, which... Yeah, I, typically, yeah, that's a very common one in video games. You find artifacts from a, an earlier time, which indicates something more or gives you a glimpse into their culture and oftentimes the approach to their culture it's a little bit planet of the hats that's a trope where typically an entire race is it happens in books and movies and such where an entire race is defined by a single not a trope by a single single feature like oh these people are a warlike race or these people are high very culturally high-minded or something along those lines. Graffiti, on the other hand, I think, yeah, it's, an, it's a relic of the past, but I also think it adds a sense of, a sense of depth because the first thing when, when I walk down an alleyway and I see graffiti is I think, you know, the people who made that art, as talented as they are, there's this association of, oh, they are, they're delinquents. They're not necessarily not necessarily uh, mem um, productive members of society. Typically, you'd expect some people who are on the younger end of the younger end of the spectrum. So I'm I'm thinking about this when I see this graffiti. I'm now thinking about delinquents, and I'm also thinking about the socioeconomic conditions and classes. Because obviously, a person of a high a person of a high of a higher class of a higher ranking is unlikely to draw graffiti. Most likely, I would argue. Also, now we have, we're running into grass. How scary. And I'm also thinking about, what if, is there a scenario where the precursors didn't all disappear all at once? So what happened was 
there was a slow migration where maybe the upper classes were first to disappear. And eventually as life got slower and slower and just quieter, the people who were left, maybe people who don't have a means to, oh, this is so such a BS. I don't know how I escaped that. Oh yeah. And I, I threw the, no, I died. I died naturally. Welcome to the subterranean, by the way. <laughs> uh, so, so I also think about what if not everyone disappeared all at once, so the high classes would have gone first and eventually the means of escaping the cycles would have been made available to people of a lower class. So did they, did they all disappear all at once or did they not? I Look, I just think, I just think it's an interesting way of adding a lot more diversity or sophistication to an existing culture by having graffiti. Because, yeah, it's not often... I don't think many games have a thing where you you can visit the ruins of a, pre, a precursor ruin and it's actually... Not only is it ruined, but it's, it housed delinquents at one point who actually graffitied and did things that maybe were less than legal there. Because, yeah, okay, now I'm thinking about the laws. Did these precursors have laws? Obviously, they must have. What was their culture like? Oh, thank God, a flower. I hope... Should I play music in the background, I wonder? <laughs> I hope you can't hear me necessarily scratching myself. Seriously, this mic is crazy good. I love it. But that also means... Typically, there are some slight game sounds which do help cover for a lot of things. Oh, I did not even notice myself catch that bug. Maybe I did. Anyways, welcome to the subterranean. This is... Uh, this isn't the final stretch, believe me. This place is bad, and it gets worse. It gets so much worse. You know, now that... Now that I'm done here... Oh, ooh, 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 I actually do remember this scene. This is some interesting foreshadowing. Remember, a floating slug cat and orbs of light in the background. This isn't the first time I believe we've seen a similar piece of artwork. I'm pretty sure early, early on we saw there was a, we saw something similar with a floating slug cat and orbs of light in the background. It's, it's an interesting piece of foreshadowing. I'll just leave it at that. Keep that in mind. It, it was mind blowing for me the first time I saw it. I'm pretty sure it, the first time I saw it, as in the first time I saw it after I'd finished the game was during the Let's Play, and that might have been interesting. Yeah, look, you can check out these lizards fighting. And it looks like the green lizard actually killed the blue guy, which terrifies me. <laughs> I didn't... I, I I always knew they would fight, but they never never kill each other. But just then, just then, a, a green lizard killed, killed a, a blue lizard, a cyan lizard. And yeah, here's another light. There seems to be some slight differences in... The color, like, so we had a light blue lizard and now we have another blue lizard. Yeah, it's sky blue, but not quite the same color. Are they different or are they, I just tried to throw my spear at it. Oh man, this is a place where I really lament the fact that there's no sound. <laughs> you can see the blue lizard getting shocked. Um, oh, I'm going to try to kill the green lizard. I throw the spear into its head. Try and stun it. It doesn't work. I always get rushed and then I run away. I lament the lack of sound because there's a couple of good... You see a couple of new enemies, which I thought I wouldn't see. And you can you can hear my genuine reaction of fear. It, fun fact. Funny... The blah, 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 A funnier thing is... The funny thing is, this enemy I run into, it's actually dead. It's a corpse and I'm screaming, panicking, trying to jump away from it. And it's lying there dead. And I'm thinking like, why is it not attacking me? But... But the commentary really shows I'm just screaming, trying to cry. Which is a shame. That's something I wanted to see. Or or rather, I wanted people to see. Me running into a new enemy and me panicking. The absolute bollocks off. Because now if a lizard gets me, if a white lizard comes out of nowhere and gets me, I'm just like, that is such BS. But I've I've learned to internalize it and just accept it because I, I now know it's a thing that can happen. But with some of these new enemies, I don't know very much about them. Where am I going? 
Yeah, this is where... Yeah, see, this is where I start panicking. I ran into an enemy down below. It's not obvious. I'm screaming. And yeah, okay, those guys, they they can kill you. You know the little the little bugs, orange bugs, where you can eat them? And look how big this one is. Yeah, I start stabbing it. I just give up. I'm like, I... I and I'm swearing as well as I do this because I just hate this moment. I hate this... I hate this area because it feels so... It feels so grimy. And look, there's a dead scavenger. These bugs just completely killed everything here. There's the corpuses and bugs, and it's just the worst. And I hate it. And it's got this grimy brown, grayish feel to it. It's just, ugh, I hate this area. It's the subterranean. I can see this place. Yeah, it, I imagine the rain would tend to funnel down here, and all the dirt, all the dirt is just um, stuck. It, it just, yeah, it all comes down to here, and you have all the grime. This is, this is where in a bout of awesome coincidence, the scavenger throws a spear and then I throw a spear and I was very satisfied to move away. I hate this area so much because it, it, it's not, lizards aren't the main life form. It's all the, it's all the worst things. It's the bugs. It's the, it's the, the, the grass and the, the vines that reach out and kill you. It's just, it's a hostile place. The very area itself is hostile. It's not like. The lizard, normally the lizards and vultures are what makes the area hostile. But in this case, it's the, it's just the area itself. It's like trying to kill you. And yeah, I made a huge mistake. I walk into the grass. I should have just thrown my spear and climbed up to that shelter. This is how you die to those grass, those grassy boys. And that officially puts an end to this saga of no sound in the videos. Luckily, the next video will have sound to it. So thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate your viewership. Stay tuned. There's, there's going to be a lot more Rain World coming in the future with sound, would you believe? Um, really, thank you for your patience. It gets much better, better later on. And um, yeah, see you next time. Bye.